Hello everybody y'all, welcome back to another video as today we got another episode of your OGR as today is game 42 as the Edmonton Oilers went up against the Calgary Flames and uh, this Battle of Alberta was uh, not fun to watch to be completely honest with you. Uh, five and nothing to beat down by the Flames on the Oilers. Um, I was, uh, you know, disappointed by the way that we played. Um, but this day was also really hard for the Oilers. And, you know, I'm not here to make excuses just like how McDavid said that in the, the press conference. And I never hear McDavid usually, you know, make complaints about, you know, certain games. Uh, he's been in the Oilers organization for a while and, uh, you know, he's never, you know, complained about what Shirelli was doing or, you know, um, us making, not making the playoffs multiple times. He usually never complains, but he complained tonight about the fact that they had to play on the Kobe cave, um, kind of celebration of life as, uh, just one year ago, he, uh, unfortunately, uh, tragically passed away. Um, and, uh, they were having a big ceremony at Rogers center, um, and they had to play a game and McDavid felt like that was, you know, what pushed them off and, you know, watching the Oilers and looking really at this game, I noticed that big time, you know, like this team was not itself. It was, uh, every line played really poor. I think every line defensively didn't play very well. Uh, I wasn't really impressed with just about anyone in this game. Um, it, it was a really poor performance, and I hope that we do something here at the deadline. Um, we've been having tons of rumors, but we'll kind of get into that later on in the episode. Let's get on to reviewing the game, uh, even though there's not very much to talk about. As I really don't remember all these goals, I'll try to, but I, it, these are just frustrating goals. It was a lot of bad defensive miscues, a lot of giveaways. Um... Just not a lot of good playing in this game, you know? It was just lots of poor moves. Mike Smith was yelling at Caleb Jones because he made a couple mistakes. Like, it was just a whole gong show. Like, Mike Smith, if you're going to yell at Caleb Jones, you might as well yell at Tyson Berry for being an absolute bum out there, right, man? And uh, I, I, we got to really get into this game deep. I mean, I'm not going to be able to go into too much because I think if it, anyone watched this game, there wasn't too much to talk about in this game just because of the fact of how disappointing the Edmonton Oilers really played. There was no positives. Everyone played like crap. Um, like, there was no uh, speed. We were getting beat by the Calgary Flames. I mean, for Christ's sakes, even Brett Ritchie, got a damn goal against us. And that's saying a lot with Brett Ritchie scores a goal. You shouldn't be having that. That was his second of the season. He barely scores. And he's playing up on a high up line with Goudreau and Monaghan there, or used to be. Uh, he's playing lower down on the lineup now. But anyways, let's get into this. Monaghan uh, finally snaps his goal is drought. He puts up his eighth of the season. Um, can't exactly remember how that puck went in the back of the night. I think that was the five hole one. Mike Smith's five hole was absolutely... Just weak tonight. They were really picking at it. Uh, Lindholm scored a nice one, five hole. Um, and then also Johnny Goudreau scored his 14th goal of the season. It was a wonderful snipe. Uh, and then Lindholm, he got one on the power play uh, right through the five hole. He was left wide open. Goudreau set him up. And then uh, Mark Giordano, he was also left wide open um, and left there in the middle of nowhere just to give. We gave him like tons of time. Giordano took the nicest shot ever and scored his seventh. And then, of course, Richie with this random ass shot that somehow um, went to the back of the net. And in my opinion, I was like thinking, I'm like, are we going to yank Mike Smith here? Like, if, you know, Mika Koskinen and Lennon four in a row goals, we would have already been pulling, you know, Miku Koskinen and it would have been throwing in Mike Smith. So why why not throw Miku Koskinen in this position, man? I felt like that's what we needed to do. I mean, I stopped caring about the game after those four goals, and I didn't see, you know, Mika Koskinen go out there. But I definitely felt like we should have done that. I felt like, you know, we should have thrown out, you know, Mika Koskinen in, the, in there to maybe change things up after, like, the third or fourth goal, right? I mean, they scored two goals in under three minutes, and, I mean... You need to change up something, right? You need to change up the goaltending, whatever you need to do. Mike Smith was not looking very good. 
on there in the net. And I, I think Tippett starts, you, you got to stop having such a hard on for Mike Smith, for Christ's sakes. I think that that's really what's derailing our team at some moment of time is Tippett's like love, love spells that he has with some players like Devin Shore and, you know, Chris Russell and Mike Smith. He has these love boners for these people and he just loves keeping them in the lineup no matter how bad they play. Um, and that was even including Kyle Turris. He tried to make him good, but there was just no way that you can make Kyle Turris good. He was just such a bum. Um, but yeah, this game was just poor. I, I don't even really think I could even go deep into the game. Like I know Kelly Rudy was bashing Poli RV for being bad defense, which was such a dumb thing. He was cherry picking the worst clips from the game and he was like, oh yeah, uh, just blew you over. He needs to improve in his defensive game. I'm like, don't these guys that are analy analysts on a TV show, shouldn't they be looking, you know, inside the numbers and actually being sure that, hey, is Pulley RV playing a bad defensive game this year? No, because his analytics don't show that. His analytics are amazing this year. And it's also, his, his stats are great. And also, I wanted to absolutely kill myself during this game because I had to once again listen to Cassie Campbell. And I hope for next year for Sportsnet, they just get rid of her. She is the worst, you know, color commentator ever that I've ever heard in my life. She constantly talks about the game. Like, when the puck drops, she's talking about whatever for five minutes. And I'm like, man, can I listen to the play-by-play -play of this game? I don't want to be hearing your, your story about a Calgary Flames player or how Connor McDavid's not doing very good in this game or whatever. Or Mike Smith accidentally, purposely knocking off someone's helmet. Like, it is such a joke how bad she is at color commentating. Now, I'm not saying that every female out there sucks at, you know, talking hockey. I know some great people that love hockey and that talk great hockey. Sarah Nurse is one of them. I think Butterell as well is one of them that I absolutely love seeing up on the TV because... They actually speak facts and they don't speak out of their ass like Cassie Campbell. She is, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of her, at least for color commentator. She just sucks up to the Calgary Flames too much. And especially I have to listen to her every single Saturday night and is a bit annoying. And she talks way too much, especially as a color commentator. You, as a color commentator, you're not supposed to talk while the game's going on. You, paw, you, you talk when there's like something good that happens and you only talk for a little bit. Fucking Cassie Campbell talks for like a half an hour about this stupid thing that she wants to talk about. It's just, I'm not a big fan of her. You know, I I, I wish that she wasn't our color commentator. I don't mind uh, your meet uh, Singh. I, I think he's a very good commentator. I like his voice. Um, he still needs to improve about, uh, upon it. He's more, I think, like me and my dad were talking about, he's better than the Punjabi because he's able to get, you know, lift up his emotions, which I do enjoy him in that, even though I don't understand the language. Um, but I do enjoy him as a play-by-play -play guy, but just not as so much as Cassie Campbell. I, <laughs> I, I like my boy Jack Michaels and Louis DeBrus. Those are my favorite boys. Um, anyways, I have to derail myself about talking about other stuff instead of this crappy-ass game. Also, Tyler Ennis got up with Pauly RV and McDavid. They weren't able to really do too much anyways in the game. Uh, also, Neil got implemented into the lineup since Nuge was put on the IR, which suspects me that I'm thinking that the Oilers might make a deal here. Um... There was lots, a lot to talk that we might actually be going after Taylor Hall. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately uh, about this whole Taylor Hall situation. And, you know, if the, the, the only way that I'm going to be happy about a Taylor Hall trade, because I said in the last episode that, you know, Taylor Hall would be too expensive. If we were to go after Taylor Hall here in this situation, it would have to be for cheap. It would have to be, you know, like a prospect. Of, what was I hearing? Like a first Samarokov and like some other player or whatever, James Neal. And I'm like, I would be perfectly fine with trading away our first of this season, but not two years of first. Because I think that's what Buffalo is trying to pull out right now is two years of first, which is just, we're not doing that for Taylor Hall, who has not been producing for you guys this year. He doesn't have a lot of value. Um, I, I would say like a first and a, a prospect for Taylor Hall, especially with how he's been producing you're not going to be able to get the the things out of them but if we do pick up taylor hall for very cheap and it looks like a reasonable price i will be very happy about it if we do you know pick up taylor hall i don't know if it'll be enough to make a a push for a, a cup run but i think he'd give us that more offense that we need um anyways i'll, I'll say my last thoughts on this game uh i i did my like this game was painful to watch um from the uh start to finish you can see that these guys were sluggish and uh, they weren't very happy to, you know, play on this night that uh, they had to, you know, 
Um, uh, I, I guess think about the the whole the memorial thing. Um, you know, it, it's very hard when you know that person uh, uh, very well, especially Kobe Cave. He was a big guy for the Edmonton Oilers there for a while, and also the Boston Bruins. So when a guy like that passes away uh, a year ago and they have a big memorial for it, it, it's pretty hard to, you know, play your A game. And you've seen that from Dry Saddle missing the net a lot, right? We only had 17 shots. And, I mean, we would have had way more if we were to actually hit the net. Um, so I'm not going to really critique this game any more than, uh, you know, what it has on Twitter. Um, it was a bad game. It wasn't uh, something I really wanted to see as an Oilers fan, watching my team get their asses kicked by the Calgary Flames. Um, I think we'll be back and ready to go for next week, though. Um, I think we're going to be going up against Vancouver on the 16th. So um, we're going to be a couple days away from that. So it's going to be a lot of no hockey for the next week. But do not worry, guys. I got some uh, new content. And also, uh, today is my two-year anniversary. Um, I know I didn't really say anything about it yet. Um, I'm planning on making some videos here this week. Um, probably for my very first video that went up on the 17th. Uh, which was uh, my actual date when I started making YouTube videos here on uh, YouTube. So I might make a little tier list of uh, all my favorite franchise modes and, and do kind of a special update video for you guys as well. Just thank you guys uh, for all the support. I, I'm also going to say thank you for all that support uh, right now as well because um, we're at 451 right now over the past two years. It's absolutely amazing and I, I never uh, thought I would be here and I cannot wait for another year of doing YouTube here on uh, Peyton on the radio. But right now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, nothing too much to critique uh, on this gong show of a Flames game. It was not a fun one to watch. And uh, I hope you guys uh, will have a good Sunday. Uh, like me, I'm going to try to enjoy my Sunday. Um, and try not to think about the 5 nothing beat down uh, by the Calgary Flames. But uh, yeah, for right now, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Adios, amigos.